Let's, uh, let's welcome in the BC coach and talk about this schedule and what's ahead for the Eagles this year. Jeff Halfley, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us, bud. Thanks for having me on, guys. I appreciate it. It's good to catch up with you. So you got to take a chance to take a look at this schedule. Does, is this something that coaches think about at this time of year? Like when you get it and you can sit down and look at it, do you say like, oh, all right, this sets up nicely for us, or oh, this is a disaster. Or do you just say like, so much can happen between now and when the season kicks off and we play these games that it's not worth thinking about? Well, I think every coach thinks about it. You, you kind of know who you're going to play going in. Um, you know, those games are set up, but you definitely like to see where each team falls, how you're going to start, um, what the middle looks like, and then who you end with. Um, and then you kind of look for those home and away games. How many away games do you have in a row? How many home games do you have in a row? Night games. You know, last year we had a bunch of night games where we were back at 5 a.m. and we had, I think, three of those in a row. Um, so I just, I know who we're going to play. Look, I don't make the schedule. Whoever they put on the schedule, We'll be happy to go suit up and give our best. Um, but I love the seven home games, five away games. And one of the other things I really like is we're not on the road back-to-back -back weeks. Um, I think at times that pays a toll on our players. Uh, I think the only time we are back-to-back -back away, we have a buy in between. So I like the way that that sets up. Um, I love the Friday night games. I think the players enjoy them. I think it's good to get on national TV. And then this will be our first Thursday night game, which talking to some of our players today, I think they're excited about that as well. So hard to get ready for those games, but um, the other team obviously has to go through the same thing. And, and then you get some recovery time following that. So there's definitely pluses and minuses to it. Um, but I do like the way the schedule's set up, um, you know, and, and we'll, we'll get to work and look forward to it. Jeff, I have to add a little bit of a personal note here. You guys have heard me talk about my daughter, little AA, who always picks Boston College because she did it a couple of years ago when you almost beat Clemson. So this morning before she left for school, I said, OK, I'm talking to Coach Halfley today, little AA. Do you have a message? She said, please win more games. And so I say this because <laughs> the schedule, I feel, sets up for a bounce back year. I mentioned this earlier in the show. Because of the way it's laid out for you, not having divisions, not being a part of the Atlantic, I feel this is a really good schedule for you guys. Do you feel like now you're going to be a beneficiary without the divisions headed into this year? Well, one, I appreciate your uh, daughter's words of wisdom. Um, my four-year-old Leah <laughs> has been constantly telling me the same thing, that we need to win more games. Um, so we're, we're definitely going to work on that. You know, I think regardless of the schedule, um, we were a young team last year, 37 of the 44 in the 2D. You know, the last half of the season were first or second year players. Um, I thought we got better as the year went on. With the injuries to the O-line, I thought we got better and improved, which was hard, really hard. But I think now we have depth there. We've got young players who have played a lot of football last year you know the attitude the effort the excitement in the offseason from them has been great and um, you know I'm just really looking forward to getting back with them getting to spring football and then seeing what we can do but there's definitely an excitement within the team um, you know we'll keep our expectations internally um, and just work every day to get better uh, but I really do like this football team and they um, you know they, they went through a lot last year stuck together and um, I do think the future is bright. Jeff, you, you mentioned the young guys who developed as the year went along and got better, and, and certainly we saw that in some of the late season performances. Um, but you look at sort of the modern day college football and the way that the, the whole sport is set up with the portal and with NIL and the number of guys who can leave so easily and, and the amount of tampering that certainly we've heard is going on. How, as, a, as a program that is, you're wanting to develop guys, you're looking for those kind of diamonds in the rough a lot of times in developing them and getting them better. It, aren't you sort of at risk of like, yeah, we went through a hard season of getting young guys ready to play at a high level, only for other teams to kind of come in and scoop those guys away now that they're ready to play at that level. How do you combat that? Yeah, I think that's a, a question and a concern a lot of people had. You know, we had our first down year since I've been here um, and really the biggest portal year. And usually when you combine those and you play a lot of young players like we did, you're at risk of losing a lot of those young players. Um, and that was certainly a concern. Fortunately, we didn't. Um, you know, I know p people probably came after a lot of those young guys. I know for a fact um, people came after a couple. And kind of like Zay last year, you know, I was fortunate. Those players called me. We had great conversations and they wanted to stay. 
Um, and that's huge because for us, we are going to be a developmental team. We need to get guys, develop them, recruit well, and then certainly now with the portal, we can go out and add pieces, uh, make sure we get the right fit culturally. Um, you know, there's a special type of kid that comes to Boston College and wants to be here, so I need to make sure that that fits school, it fits our locker room, um, and the way we do things here. And I'm excited about that. And I think one of our biggest wins in the off season was keeping those good young players. And I think that sends a message that. You know, despite our hard season, these guys believe in the staff, they believe in their teammates, and they're really excited about the future. Um, not a fan of the tampering. Um, I, I think it's ruining our game, and I'm disappointed in the coaches that, you know, do that, knowingly do it, um, and deny doing it. But if we can keep that connection with our players, especially the young ones, um, you know, we got a chance to be a really good football team. Jeff, what can be done about tampering at this point? I, I don't know at this point. Um, you know, I stopped worrying about that and just started turning my energy towards spending time with the players, connecting with the players, coaching the players, um, and, and trying to make sure that, that I can do a good job of showing them why they should stay, um, whether it's what we're building towards, our bright future, one of the best degrees in America, um, or just the way we do things. And, you know, so far that's worked. And I'm sure there'll be guys that eventually will choose to leave. Um, that's why we have to be careful when we go out and recruit. We got to find the right fit for us. Sometimes you look at a great player, um, but might not fit here at BC and might not fit our culture. And you got to be really careful of that right now. Because if you do go for the wrong kid just to try to get a certain player, he's probably going to leave you. And um, like I said, this is we have two recruiting classes here right now. The 23 class will be our third. Um, and we're really excited about those guys. And we're really excited about some of the vets we have that they chose to stay too. And it's a combination of both of those things um, that, that makes me excited to be here right now. So I want to ask you, you mentioned the, the portal and one guy who obviously did go into the portal was Phil Jerkovic. Uh, part A of this question, where does that leave your quarterback battle as far as your, your mind is going into the spring and, and then into the season? And number two, you're going to get to see Phil against Pittsburgh late in the season this year. Is it going to start being awkward? I think there's three of these games in the ACC where former quarterbacks are going against their old teams. No, I don't think it will be awkward. Um, I love Phil. Phil and I have a great relationship. Uh, Phil and I still text and talk. I will root for Phil. Um, Phil came here, gave everything he had for three years, had highs, had lows, battled. I think he's a warrior, graduated from BC, so he's got a great degree. You know, Emmett was our guy the last four weeks of the season. Emmett Moorhead uh, played really well against Duke, almost led us back in his first start really since high school. Um, then he goes down to NC State and, uh, you know, knocks off the number 16 ranked team in the country on a two-minute drive to throw a touchdown pass to another freshman, Joe Griffin, um, to, to win the game. Um, you know, Phil and I had that conversation, and it, and it was mutual. It's, he kind of saw that where we were going forward with Emmett, and at the same time, I think his time here in his mind was probably done. And I told him I'd make calls for him, help him any way I could. And um, I'm just really happy that he got to go home, finish his last year in his hometown, uh, be around his family. And uh, I'm sure he'll do a great job. And I'm sure we'll have some fun leading up to that game. But I will root for him every week of the season, um, you know, obviously other than that game. But that was, that was as clean as can be um, in, in one of the portal deals where, you know, both parties, um, you know, were happy for one another. And I will wish him the best. Jeff, you mentioned moving forward with Emmett. You are going to be bringing in a new offensive coordinator. It hasn't been announced yet, but what can we expect to see out of whomever you're going to be bringing in in terms of what you are going to get out of him and the offense and Emmett moving forward? Yeah, well, one, you know, I think, you know, getting more back, more back to Emmett, um, just how impressive he was in the last four weeks. The leadership that he already commands from this team, both on the offense and defensive side. Right now, I think he's 6'6", 240 pounds. He's athletic. Um, he throws the balls about as well as anyone I've seen. Processes at a high level. Really smart guy. Really sharp guy. Loves football. And more athletic than you think. I mean, the guy, in his spare time, he likes to surf. And, you know, he's one of those guys that gets on a board and has a kite attached to it and does flips. And um, really special young man. And, and I think, you know, our team knows it's his time. Um, as for the offense, we won't get too much into detail on that. Um, we've got a good plan, just finalizing some details. Um, you know, our philosophy on offense won't change much, but people will have to stay tuned and, uh, and check us out early in the season to figure that one out. 
All right, Jeff, me, you, and Emmett, we're going to head out to uh, Hawaii. We'll do some surfing. I think this is a great off-season story that I need to work on now. Can, so, can, seriously, uh, can, you, can you, do you, do you surf? I, ha I used to live in San Diego and surfed a little. I was more, uh, more than surfing, I can get on a fall off of a surfboard. I'm really good at that part of it. So No, you should, you uh, should yeah, see some of it. I got to get you guys. Actually, I can text you some videos. I'm talking about some enormous waves where it looks like it's a professional surfer. Then all of a sudden, Emmett pops out, and it's him on the board. And this isn't a small guy. Like, he's literally 6'6", 240, and looks like some giant out there catching a wave. All right, I'm super jealous, and yes, we're making this happen now. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us. This has been uh, this might be the highlight of the year is uh, talking surfing with with you and uh, uh, and talking about Emmett Moorhead. So thanks for doing it. All right, guys, I appreciate it, and uh, hopefully we'll talk again soon.